Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. My name is Shreya Gosai. Until last week, I was the president of the Graduate Student Council at Tandon. But I guess now I am the former president since I graduated last week with my master's in financial engineering. Yay, that's great. Congrats, Shreya, once more. Um, I'm very excited for you. I'm also a little sad because it means I won't see you as much, so I, I expect you will keep in touch. Also, everyone, if, if you haven't seen the fantastic video that Shreya and her classmates made for their graduation, you can really check it out. We'll share a link to where you can find it on our social media. Well, thank you so much, Dean Elena. That's so sweet of you. For everyone watching who hasn't had a chance to virtually meet her yet, this is Tandon's Dean, the amazing Yelena Kovacevic. <laughs> she wanted the opportunity to speak to you, our new incoming class of graduate students. So we are going to have um, more of an informal conversation about some of the things that might be on your mind um, based on the previous student chats that we have hosted. We'll talk about plans for the fall, her goals for the school, and some questions that you may have. Dean Yelena, thank you so much for taking the time to be here for this chat. Of course, and thank you so much for joining me even after you graduated. That's really commitment. <laughs> Um, before we get started, I also want to quickly mention that we'll be joined at the end by Andrew from Graduate Admissions Office to run through some student questions as well. Dean Yelena, since this is a chance for admitted graduate students to get to know you better, can you talk a little bit about your background and how you came to Tandem? Sure. So I was uh, born and grew up in ex-Yugoslavia, Serbia today in Belgrade. Uh, I went to uh, a math high school where I had like 20 hours of math a, a week, uh, which I loved because from very early on I was into math and I actually went to, into engineering because of math. Somebody told me in electrical engineering you can do a lot of math and I said, oh, that sounds like a great idea. And at some point somebody told me, oh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a potentially an interesting thing for you to continue our education in the US and I applied to a few schools, ended up in New York um, at Columbia University for my PhD. And I, I've been in New York actually since 1987. And um, I worked on signal processing. Uh, those of you who don't know what it is today, probably it's connected to data science and machine learning and so on. I worked at Bell Labs for 11 years. It was an amazing place. Then I was at Carnegie Mellon uh, in the departments of biomedical engineering and electrical and computer engineering for 15 years. I was the department head of electrical and computer engineering department for five years. And then I came to Tandon um, that used to be known under the name of Brooklyn Poly. It has a very long history. It started in 1854. And even before coming here, I actually, my favorite book, um, my favorite, if you want, professional book was by a poly professor, uh, Papoulis. It was on stochastic processes. And not only that, but um, I am in this business because I really, really love to teach. Um, I love hanging out with you guys. Uh, I love students. Uh, I have a 26 year old daughter. So every time I look at one of you, I, I think of her. And, uh, you know, the, the time at Tandon, I started in August of 2018. So not quite two years, though it feels like a lifetime, especially because of the situation that's happening now. You know, it's been absolutely exciting. It's, it's an amazing school. It has amazing people, faculty, staff. And it really, it's all about you. It's all about students. So how about you, Shriya? What's your story? How, how did you find your way to Tandon? Um, before I talk about that, I just want to say that your accomplishments are so amazing. I've always been in, in an awe of you. It's just amazing to hear you talk Aww, about your so sweet. Thank you. such an inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my background is that um, I completed my undergrad three years ago in electrical and electronics engineering with a minor in economics from Bellor Institute of Technology in India. 
And after that, I worked for a year at Schneider Electric, which is a French MNC, as a project manager. And in the fall of 2018, I came to Tandon to pursue my master's in financial engineering. I think I knew that I wanted to build a career in finance, but I also always loved technology. So financial engineering was like the perfect blend of finance and technology, which is what uh, made me take this course up. And when I was looking for programs, Tandon always kind of stuck out in all the rankings and the ratings. And it had a flexible curriculum, which gave me the liberty to choose the kind of courses that I wanted, wanted to take, which is um, the biggest reason why I chose Tandon. And the fact that it's in New York City is just a whole reason in itself, I think. <laughs> yeah, that appealed to me. I, I, I'll be honest, uh, the reason why I chose Columbia among many other schools was because I thought I wanted to live in a city where everybody was from somewhere else. I, I read at some point that there are people from 150 something different countries in the city. And this non-homogeneity really appeals to me because every time you meet somebody, you learn something new, right? That's the, that's the path to, to growth. But what sticks to you, what's the most interesting thing, you know, good or bad, kind of be honest, it's a conversation between us and who knows hundreds of many others who are, who are tuning in. Um, what's the most interesting part uh, about your Tandon experience? I think um, the two things um, that I really miss about Tandon, one, the people, I think, like you said, I've come across so many amazing people from different backgrounds and they've inspired me so much and I've learned so much from them. I'm really going to miss that. The second thing is the hustle and bustle of NYU and NYU Tandon. You know, there's, there's always an event going on or there's always an opportunity to learn something new or do something new. I think I'm really going to miss that. I'm still kind of getting over the fact that I've graduated. It'll take some time. <laughs> it takes a while well. to sink in, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. It'll take a while to kind of sink in. <laughs> and, and so what, do you, what, what are you going to do now? Do you feel you were prepared? Do you feel like we did a good job or not to go out there and, and you know, attack, attack your career, whatever that may be? Oh, yes. I think definitely from day one, it was always um, about... Um, I think the professors and the career services at Tandon kind of always prepare you to put your best foot forward. So I remember like all my classes, even though we had, we obviously had like a curriculum to follow, but they always made a point to link um, the skills that we're gaining to what's happening in the world and how those skills are transferable to the corporate world. Um, at the end of my first semester, I landed an internship with Barclays Investment Bank as a risk analyst. And then after completing that, at the end of last year's summer, I was offered a full-time position with them. So in July, I'll be joining them in New York City, and I'm very excited about Congratulations. that. Congratulations. And that's, is it virtual? Well, so I think they're kind of still figuring out the details. Okay. Yes. like everybody else <laughs> yes exactly i yeah. think everyone is just trying to figure out how to get past this and that actually brings us to the really 800 pound gorilla in the room this this pandemic so how are you doing with all this i mean you have missed you know the end of the semester you know the graduation we are postponing in person but still there was this virtual celebration what are the emotions what's going on um, I think the last couple of months have been a ride, least to say. Um, everything happened so quickly and so abruptly. It definitely took a while to process all of it. Um, though I think the professors did a really nice job in kind of taking the curriculum and the plan for the semester online. And it took a while, but the students kind of caught up. That includes myself. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, in terms of student engagement, I really did miss um, the kind of engagement activities that we had on campus, but uh, my council members and I worked very closely with the Dean of Student Affairs to make sure that we still are able to engage the student community, take constant feedback from them and sort of act on it. So it's, it's definitely been challenging, but it's also kind of been an opportunity for us to figure out um, a different way of working through things. 
And I think it's also been uplifting to hear about all of the work that is coming out of Tandon related to tackling issues around the coronavirus. I mean, every week I see stories of faculty and students involved in everything from making face shields to inventing mm -hmm. medical devices to commenting on the impact of financial markets. I think it means a lot um, to be part of a place that's trying to do so much. But um, what about you? Obviously, a lot changed for the school overnight. And you and other administrators are having to deal with that and figure out what's next. I mean, over the past two years, I've worked um, closely with admissions office. And I was in the communications team where we were handling queries from prospective and admitted students. And over the past few months, we saw a huge influx of questions. And rightfully, everyone is concerned about what's going to happen. So I know a lot of admitted students um, want to hear about plans for the fall and what their experience is going to be like. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, uh, look, the last few months have been a really challenging time. Just it has been for, for everyone. Um, you know, everyone has their own personal challenges, professional challenges, you know. Personally, you know, like everybody else, I'm stuck in a room um, because I'm not commuting. I had all these big plans how, you know, I'm going to use this extra time to do some exercise at home, but that, you know, will last it for two days and then, you know, uh, didn't kind of follow through. So I keep on going back and, and back and forth, right? Uh, my daughter, I, as I mentioned, she's 26. She's actually a nurse on a COVID floor in Denver. So this has been a worry for me, but you know, I find it also inspiring of what she's doing. I, I, am, I am so impressed by people who go into this every day, right? And they don't really complain about this. And then professionally, honestly, I worry, of course, about the health and safety of all of you, our students, our colleagues, um, trying to make sure that operationally we deliver uh, the education remotely. Of course, look, you know, we are in a better position than most because we have these amazing online programs and courses and so on. So we know how to do these things well. You know, trying to make decisions about the future. We're all scientists, engineers, technologists. And I think the hardest thing for us is to make decisions based on imperfect and, uh, uh, you know, in not enough information, right? And things we have very little or no control over like where is the pandemic going to go the immigration challenges with visas being delayed when consulates are going to open there's there is not much that we can do about this so we're trying to be as accommodating as we can like we pushed our deposit deadline to june 1st we're trying to take into account the domino effect decisions on what we are Capable, capable of delivering in the fall. But I'm a, I'm a born optimist, I am. And at, time it's, it's, at times it's really annoying to people around me because you know, I keep on saying things will be fine. I mean, eventually they will be, right? But I mean, that's what helps me go through challenging times. But also I can see that, you know, I am very hopeful about things that are happening. Um, I hope that all of you have heard about the Jumpstart summer programming we introduced uh, new this year for incoming students um, that includes three things we haven't had before so this is how the you know pandemic makes us be creative we have these tandem summer scholars courses that allow admitted students to take a master's course uh, to get ahead of the fall we have the summer career academy you mentioned tandem career services to help people uh, take this time in quarantine to get started preparing for internships and work. We have um, NYU Tandon May Challenge, something I'm particularly excited about, where we are hosting three um, two-week entrepreneurial team challenges. They start next week. And these students are going to develop solutions to COVID healthcare problems. And the way we identified those problems were by talking to our hospital and Gone Grossman School of Medicine to see what they are finding really challenging um, in these times and what is it that our students could attack. And this is something that would not have existed without this pandemic. And it's something that we are now looking into to figure out how do we make this part as a curriculum and you know, kind of expand it going further. 
I think that's amazing. I mean, unfortunately, I didn't get to do all of these things, but I'm really glad that the new class gets to benefit from it. Um, you briefly mentioned the fall earlier. Can you talk more about what that will look like? I think I saw new information recently came out about that. And I know that's something that the students are extremely focused on. Yes, of course, as you know, one of the higher education leaders said, I forget who, and I really related much to it, as I said before, you know, dealing with insufficient data. It's like planning for the fall is like driving through a dense fog. <laughs> There is a lot we don't know, right? But we are people who operate on data and there are some decisions that, you know, the university and we felt comfortable making. So we are planning to reconvene um, in the fall in person, of course, subject to guidance from health authorities. We don't know exactly what course the pandemic will take, but we are working towards that. And we are planning this with several safety measures you know we are reviewing campus spaces to ensure that any person in-person classes or activities allow for social distancing we're going to make masks available for all members of the nyu community and we will require their use uh, we will conduct virus and antibody testing and contact tracing we're going to reduce density in student housing and we will develop more flexible formats for student life activities. You know, one thing that's, that's really uh, advantageous um, being at NYU, this, this enormous school with so much expertise, yeah, we have some of the most renowned expert researchers, practitioners in areas like epidemiology, medicine, technology that can be used for tracing, for remote care delivery, and so on. So, you think about the fact that we are drawing on leaders from Langone Grossman School of Medicine, the School of Nursing, uh, the School of Global Public Health, in, in addition to Tandon's own experts. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting others, but there is really a few better places to be in terms of being at forefront of safe practices. And, and another positive of this pandemic is it's really forced um, for those of us in higher education to examine ways we've done things in the past and how we're delivering an education. And so we have sort of the permission to innovate and be extraordinarily flexible in terms of how you as students can access your education next year. So we are giving four pathways this fall, um, basically, get NYU Tandon, we said your way on your terms based on your specific situation as much as we can. So for example, for anyone who can be in New York for the fall, you'll be able to have access to campus, classes, and facilities as far as they're able to open and being held in person, right? Again, you know, given state and federal guidelines. And to be totally upfront, it's very likely that classes will be mixed mode where you have some in-person and some remote uh, contact uh, and content depending on class size and nature of the class. Naturally, if you think of a really huge class, you know, these classes will mostly uh, probably be online with some maybe recitation sections or smaller sections in person. Um, it's something that's not dissimilar from flipped classroom mode that some of you may be familiar with. And I actually taught a flipped classroom for many years. You know, it has nothing to do with the pandemic, but you know, I developed it because I thought it was a pedagogically better way to deliver uh, what I was teaching. Then the second thing is we're going to be accommodating with late arrivals where you may choose to be, uh, begin the semester remotely from wherever you are and then to switch to in-person once you're able to get to New York. You can choose to do your education entirely remotely for the fall if that's more comfortable if you, for you or if you're experiencing challenges with visas, for example. And we are making sure that faculty are planning for remote access to course, even if it's an in-person course to account for the fact that some of you might not be able to arrive in time in, in in time or you you're not able to be here in the fall in person we are also exploring other creative options for our international students who currently live near global campus like shanghai to see if we can 
offer some in-person education there and then come to Tandem in the spring. I know that that's a lot of information to take in. So if you weren't taking notes, um, I hope you're not spending time taking notes, but anyhow, uh, we will include the link to a website where all this information is, um, is available afterwards. That's great to hear. Um, as someone who has participated in CPT, I know many international students are likely wondering what effect the pandemic will have on OPT and CPT eligibility. Is that something that you can shed light on? Um, well, look, we continue to monitor the situation. It's something we don't control. This is done at the federal level. And so we publish, NOIU publishes answers, latest answers on the OGS, that's the Office of Global Services site. Um, and the link is included in the email you received with this recording. Um, they'll have answers to the question, for example, will I be eligible for off-campus work authorization, CPT, OPT, if I take my first semester uh, completely remotely outside the United States, and they will break it down by, let's say, newly admitted graduate students who were not previously enrolled in another academic program in the United States and those who were, right? Um, but that's, you know, again, the latest information is there and I encourage you to um, click on this link and go see uh, what's happening at the moment when you're actually hearing this. Well, I'm glad that NYU is keeping a tab on it and advocating for international students. I know people will continue to have questions, but it's good to hear that some aspects of the fall are starting to kind of take shape. Um, but thanks again for speaking with me today. I am going to miss chances to do this and meet you in person. I just have one more thing that I wanted to ask. Tandon has grown and changed so much even in the time that I've been here, which is almost the same time that you've been here. And I'm sure you have uh, more planned. It's, um, it's kind of bittersweet that I'm leaving and won't get to see those changes, but the students listening will get to see some of that evolution happen. Can you talk about what you see for Tandon and engineering moving forward? Well, that's a, that's a big question. And, you know, normally I would say change doesn't happen overnight, but after all this, apparently it <laughs> sometimes does. I'm kidding, sort of, not really. Um, yes, of course, I'm happy to talk about some of our plans and what's important to us. First, look, uh, even when you leave, you are, you know, sort of for your lifetime connected to us. You're part of Tandon Fabric and I hope we'll have a chance to see much more of you and knowing you, I'm sure you will be involved with your younger colleagues coming and you know, giving some wisdom and, and you know, yeah, that's what we want. More students like you, Shreya, who really exemplify the tandem mate spirit, people who approach everything with a mix of determination, street smarts, very New York thing, with a desire to innovate and change something for the better. Uh, but also with a real heart and not only for yourself, but for people around you and, and making some impact on society. We have such a diverse student body that people will all set out to change things in their own way, but there are just some things that, that are, I, I feel are inherent to attendance students and it's those qualities. And we are working on ways to really nurture and reward those qualities <clears throat> like the tandem a challenge I mentioned earlier. But we're also looking to channel our considerable research knowledge and expertise into a few key areas. One was definitely response to pandemic. Um, that meant, you know, short-term response, as you mentioned, like innovating in open source face shield design that I think there are 2 million plus face shields in the world that have been created by our design and 700,000 just in New York City that were given um, to our healthcare workers. Uh, but, you know, things like new medical devices, no touch technical monitoring for healthcare delivery, but also long-term responses like researching people's interaction in their environment with surfaces, how transportation patterns impact disease spread, uh, things that will de determine future responses to challenges like this. 
because Brooklyn and New York City are the ultimate living lab in many ways for how, how something like this affects particularly people living in dense quarters in urban environments, we're really at the center of being able to shape how we can better tackle global health crises. Another big area for us is cybersecurity and creating a globally leading wireless infrastructure and the workforce around it that's ready to protect it. NYU has one of the leading centers in cybersecurity and Tandon in particular is at the forefront of cybersecurity education as well as wireless. The so-called father of 5G leads our wireless research center. He's already looking into 6G with his colleagues. Um, this massive transition to remote work and study is bringing into focus issues we've already been looking at regarding bandwidth, uh, network security issues, and those things will continue to be uh, super important. And you, as a finance and risk engineering grad, I'm sure you appreciate how critical security is with finance effectively now digital and so many issues around protecting data and privacy, right? Mm -hmm. um, we are also looking at the intersection of technology and citizen engagement, how technology is going to play a role in that. We have an election coming up in the US. We have some of the leading researchers and innovators in the world looking at the things like deep fake manipulation, social media advertising and ways people can be influenced as well as how tech can be used for good in terms of connecting lawmakers and citizens around the world so people can participate in government. Again, our faculty and students have a lot of diverse uh, interest areas and experience and will influence so many aspects of tech and engineering, but these are some pressing issues we want to make sure we're focusing on um, in the near future because they're critical both now and moving forward. Amazing. Thank you so much for outlining that for us. I want to switch gears a little bit. I know we have Andrew from our graduate admissions team joining us now with some student questions uh, that they would love to go through and answer. Sure, Andrew, great to see you. I know you've been hosting a fair number of these virtual events, so I'm sure there are some questions and you're an, an expert. Of course, yeah, and, and thank you, Yelena, for your time today to, to create this video for our incoming students, Shreya, you as well. I think both of you have shared some great uh, insights and comments that our incoming students will really appreciate. There's a few comments in those events that Yelena had just mentioned that we have had from our incoming students that I also want to include in this. So. We'll take just a few minutes to go through those last few questions just to round out our conversation. The first question that we do see from our incoming students, especially at this time during their enrollment process, is regarding the fall 2020 registration process and when they would get in contact with their advisor. Um, so we want all the incoming students to know that the advising and registration process for the fall 2020 semester will start on June 12th. And in the next few weeks, you'll receive an email from the graduate admissions office with contact information for your advising um, team and how to get in touch with them in the, the time schedule for that as well. So if you're wondering if you've missed out on any registration in information or emails you haven't yet, you're definitely not behind on any part of that. Another question that some of our students asked in the events is about the, the NYU community and if it's possible for them to take courses um, outside of Tandon at the other schools of NYU so they can round out their education and and of course we we always tell students that first and foremost they're a student of NYU and and they have access to a number of different courses across NYU including the Stern School of Business and the Courant Institute of Math and Sciences which is our two locations that our students generally love to take courses at to include with their Tandon course schedule so yes that is possible and it's a huge benefit of being a student at NYU. Um, another question that students are asking, um, especially given the pandemic, Yelena and Trey, you've both done a great job, I think, shedding some light on what some of those options would be, but students are wondering, um, with some of the uncertainty moving forward, what would be the options for them to defer if that becomes an, uh, an option they wish to take advantage of, uh, maybe start a little bit later and instead of starting in fall 2020? And what I think uh, personally, I just want everyone to be aware of for the incoming class is that the deferral process doesn't have a deadline of um, until August 19th. So if you're, there's plenty of time to take uh, account into all of the options that you have available to you and make that decision. You have, like I said, until August 19th. 
You can defer your enrollment up to one year, and there's no limits on the number of deferrals that NYU Tandon will, will allow. So I know students are, are asking in terms of maybe they're gonna miss out on the opportunity. Um, there's not a maximum or a cap on the number of deferrals that we will process, but we do wanna encourage you not to defer if possible, because the Jumpstart programs that Yelena had mentioned, um, including the Tandon Summer Scholars Program and the Career Services Academy um, are only available for students who enter into the fall 2020 semester, and they may not be available after this particular year. Uh, as Yelena mentioned, there's a number of opportunities um, for varying formats for you to enroll in the fall 2020 semester. So we have taken into consideration the scenarios that you as the students would be experiencing, whether you're an international student not being able to get a visa or your consulate's not opening immediately. Uh, we have created different options for you to attend remotely or virtually, um, and then even potentially get a visa at a later date and arrive late for the fall 2020 semester. So there's a lot of flexibility built into the options that we're offering for the fall 2020 semester. So if deferring is simply uh, an uncertainty that you have inside you that you're not sure what your options would be, know that NYU has created a number of options and built in flexibility for you to enroll in the fall 2020 semester. And in addition, one new element that we've added this year is the graduate admissions team is also offering individual student appointments for anyone who wants to reach out and talk to us individually and maybe expand or get a little bit more detail in terms of how these options could impact you and what the best way would be for you to take advantage of that. And I think that is all the time that we do have for today. Shreya, Yelena, thank you both so much for your time. I know I appreciate it. And, and I'm sure the incoming class will appreciate the comments and insights you've added to this as well. Thank you so much, Andrew, for addressing such important questions. And Dean Yelena, thank you for providing a forum for us to do this. Um, I'm so glad I got the chance to speak with you again, and I'm gonna miss you so much. Thank you for having me, Shriya. All my warmest wishes and best of luck. I know we will stay in touch, uh, so I will say talk to you soon. We are not gonna disappear. And I look forward to meeting all of you, our new students in the fall. Come to Tandon, it's a great place, believe me, right? <laughs> Bye everybody.